Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Data Cloud Now. I'm currently delighted to be joined by Peter Wong, Senior Director of Software Development at T-Mobile. Peter, such a pleasure to be with you here today. Thank you. Peter, T-Mobile powers the first and largest nationwide 5G network. How is your data strategy enabling real-time decision-making and operational excellence across your global teams? Yeah, that's a, a very good question. I uh, just want to uh, tell you uh, a real story uh, just happened Love that. Uh, before Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, every year we have uh, Macy Thanksgiving parade, right? Hundreds of people, thousands of people jammed. I watch it every year. Yeah, jammed in the Manhattan midtown. And, you know, when our network build, right, we build based on certain benchmark. But when you have a lot of people go there, especially when they are taking the picture, try to pass, post it in Instagram. Yeah. yeah, so it adds a lot of load on the network. So my team work very closely with our uh, network field engineering team. We build a tool on Snowflake, actually. We can uh, enable the field team quickly identify where the possible fraud will happen, wow. the network fraud. Right, so it's a real, uh, a real story. Uh, just a few hours before the Macy parade happened, we identify there are some potential network congestion may happen during the route. Wow! In the route of that parade, so immediately our field team went there, did certain configuration change to increase the uh, uh, capacity. Right, that problem solved. So then the parade went well, and nobody feel any issue. Love so that. in those cases, right, you talk about operation, in operation, no news is a good news. <laughs> so in this case, no news is a good news, right? So that's how you can see we actually have the real-time data coming to Snowflake and then have the real-time intelligence generated for the field team, uh, field operation team, to quickly identify potential fraud and fix it. When it comes to telecommunications, security and governance are paramount. That's right. How does the AI data cloud help T-Mobile balance security with innovation so your team is able to focus on business outcomes? So there are two pieces. Um, one is uh, we have a very strong cybersecurity team, right? And we work with them very closely. And we also have a very strong legal team. Uh, we work with uh, uh, legal very closely. Uh, last year, six months, about six months now, maybe seven, I organized a uh, network AI and automation governance team. So I bring all the leaders from different domains, including legal, uh, into our you know day-to-day -day, uh, practice. So first and foremost is uh, we need to educate people. Um, you know, if you think about people, process, technology, people always go first. So let's educate them. Uh, have legal, have cybersecurity to educate every one of us, what we need to watch, you know, from the AI, from the big data, all those things, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is um, we need to, I don't want to say govern, I want to say more of a enable in mm. the right way. So we encourage people to come to us with their idea. What we do is we look at all the idea and then immediately give them feedback to say, hey, if you just go somewhere to download some software, right? it may not even work, let alone to say, you know, security right. uh, issue. So we kind of already put that guardrail at the very beginning of that ideation. So people are not just go off and download something on the computer and run something. With rapid democratization of AI tools in Gen AI, how has T-Mobile's software development approach evolved and what new challenges and opportunities are you seeing? I remember uh, a couple of years ago, uh, you know, when the chat GDP started to bubble up, right? I told my team, hey, our software uh, development process is going to change. Most of the software development in the future will be managing the AI agents who potentially can write the code, right? But you, you cannot have AI just write code because you still have human to certify, to verify, to validate. Uh, the validity of the code and those kind of things. So I think that's a good thing for, for our industry. So we can do things faster and cheaper. And then we can also focusing on some other skill. Uh, uh, for example, right, um, understanding the problem space, uh, understanding end-to-end -end workflow to see how we can automate end-to-end -end workflow. Um, 
Another thing I think uh, Snowflake is doing very well, uh, at least from the ML uh, perspective, a um, lot of our non-software people are doing, network engineer people are doing, is actually uh, totally reduce that learning curve so that they are not a software developer, but they actually can take advantage of machine learning and those kind of things uh, on Snowflake. And the data literacy goes hand in hand with that very much that top down approach. Yeah. Peter, I want to pivot slightly and examine your data for good initiatives at T-Mobile as this is a, a very significant priority in the commitments that you have made to social impact through technology. How are you and the team harnessing data to drive meaningful change? We use the data to help some of the low income uh, identify those people who uh, has no income uh, individual to get government subsidized for the, uh, their connectivity needs. Um, and uh, another thing you probably heard, um, you know, know is that uh, the advantage of a snowflake is we can connect to another snowflake uh, right. uh, environment, right? So that actually reduce a lot of uh, OPEX cost. In a traditional uh, way, you have to move data in one place. Now, you, you could have a multiple uh, team that are working very fast because they know their domain knowledge, but then we can actually have each one of us connect to each other. Ease of use. Ease of use, exactly. So to me, that is also uh, data for good because I'm not holding my data, right? Uh, if you have the valid business needs, we can just open up the port underneath and then we Very can connect. Very much in, in it together. Exactly. It's been such a pleasure sitting down with you. What's next for T-Mobile? You know, we always put the customer uh, at the front center, right? And uh, one of the things we just launched, you know, in the Super Bowl is we're now going to use uh, Starlink uh, to cover uh, those very, very remote area. Uh, so people do hiking, people do, you know, remote uh, exploration. If they have problem, at least they can do some, you know, texting, right. right, to us. Guess what? All those data will be in Snowflake. Great to uh, So we will use that data to further enhance our, you know, product, which is our network, right, our connectivity. But also, uh, we want to identify uh, where we need to build more, where we need to uh, have uh, a solution like this uh, starting uh, solution uh, for, uh, for our customer. You know, you probably heard uh, we are uh, in the motion of uh, acquiring U.S. Cigar, uh, another carrier, uh, primarily at the more rural area. So we want to bring more coverage, more connectivity to U.S. Uh, rural area so that they actually can benefit from 5G, 6G in the future. It's great to hear, Peter. Yeah. Such a pleasure sitting down with yeah. you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green with Data Cloud Now. We'll see you soon.